Well, nice wee outside broadcast from Hollywood, back inside now. Um, it was really just to discuss the new A team for the Independence Drive, with Nicola being put in charge. Yep. Yeah, that's sensible. As um, well as, let me see, I did see Shirley Ann. Shirley Ann Somerville. Well. Susan Stewart. Oh, I'm running out of. Uh, well, actually, how unlike the mainstream Westminster parties. You mean they actually have women? Well, it was seen, in the driving seat. It seemed quite disciplined. I mean, it seemed to be done. At, it would be done over the summer. It would be done and dusted. Well, let's clarify what we're talking about here. There's, there's one. There's two different things here. There's uh, the new Scottish cabinet, and there's also the team that are going to run. Yes, for an independent Scotland, which is chaired by Blair Jenkins, which is not an SNP. Is that the team Shirley's joined then? Yes. Shirley, Shirley uh, Summer, Anne Summerall joined that. They say Susan Stewart, who's an um, experienced uh, PR executive, currently working for, no, I can't remember, but she's experienced. Uh, she's in charge of social networking, I think. Um, Shirley Ann's going to be doing communities. And uh, the other two. The young guy with the glasses who's moved out of government employee and into SNP employee. Oh, well, that's got nothing to do with Yes for Independence Scotland. That's Kevin Pringle, who's regarded, widely regarded as the most talented spin doctor in Scotland. Yeah, but I mean... That's Even by his enemies. That's, I mean, he's there to make sure the message is, is right. I'm not sure why... Well, know. that's why he applies spin doctor. Well, well it, I mean, there's no point moving him out of no. government into the SNP. Well, it, with the SNP, he's paying his wages, so he's obviously there as, as you say, a spin doctor, a strategist. Gets the message across. Yeah. He's always approachable to all the professional journalists that, and lobbyists. Uh, that uh, they, They've all got good words to say about him, even if they don't agree with his, his message. So he's a, he's, he's a talent. We know that Sh uh, Nicholas Sturgeon, we're switching here now to the, really to the Cabinet and the SNP team. Yeah. Um, um, Kevin Pringle's not in the cabinet, but he's an appointee, he's not an elected politician. But uh, Nicola Sturgeon's been moved yesterday and been appointed in charge of the referendum. So the, the SNP is a powerful... This is the start, this is the A-team on the park, mm -hmm. ready to go. And, um, I mean, given that there's anything, anything up to an 8% difference between uh, support for independence amongst men as opposed to among in, amongst women, it's a very clever move to put, very astute. put um, very Nicola Sturgeon, widely respected, again, even by her opponents, as a very safe pair of hands, in charge of the NHS in Scotland for five and a half years, very rarely put a foot wrong. And uh, as we know, Shirley Ann Somerville, who we know well, having she uh, she was very often prepared to speak to us in Leith FM in, in the Leith FM days. And she was a surprise loss to the SNP at the last election. Big loss. She, Big it was, loss. If she was lost. She simply lost her seat because of how successful, it's the strange arithmetic of Scottish politics, of the, how successful the SNP were in the constituencies. Well, a, a part of that as well, I think a lot to do with that was because her opponent, which was Malcolm Chisholm, who has, even though his vote has dropped, I mean, out of all the... Late, late Labour MSPs, his vote really, you know, he had, he had quite a personal vote, well, very well, well respected. Um, very well respected, not just in the area. Yeah. I mean, it's the only man I, I can think of that's resigned on principle twice. twice. And he, also the one at Salmon today. He got name checked by Salmon. By, by Salmon as well. The, the, the FMQs, and you have to say. They divide and rule there, maybe? Yes, well, sowing the seeds. Um, as we know, there is a considerable amount of dissent inside the Labour Party especially amongst Labour support, supporters, about uh, the current position that uh, Joanne Lamont and her strange team of unionists in, you know, who are cozying up to the Tories. It, it's an interesting one. I mean, Newsnight last night, uh, Nicola Sturgeon was on, and she seemed to indicate that her meeting with Mundell, or as I like to call him, Muddle, <laughs> um, was going to have some sort of result and all it seemed to result in was a meeting between the First Minister and the Scottish Secretary. The other interesting thing from the Westminster point of view, no changes to the to the unionist team that they're going into bat against. Mm. 
Um, for Same bunch of rea- you mean reactionaries, it, really. Well, a lot of the time, I mean, I, 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 I think mean, they've struggled to do better than Moore. I mean, Moore is actually respected. He's, he's seen as a fair, reasonable person. But David Mundell, well... Uh, well, he's C team. He's not even B team. No, but he's no. the only Tory in Scotland. Yeah. So they've got to treat. They, they've got to treat. They've got some to kid on their respect. Kind of respect. They've got. They've got a real problem, the Lib Dems in Scotland, because as Sam had brought up in First Minister's questions today, traditionally they've been far more pro Home Rule, a far stronger Home Rule than the current leadership in Scotland are are, are talking about. Willie Rennie's leadership and, and Tavish Scott before were very. Sceptical <coughs> about more more powers for Scotland, but traditionally the Lib- I think I believe David Steele has cons- has um, expressed considerable disquiet about the lack of um, support from the current Lib Dem le- leadership for, um, for extra powers for Scotland. I think if you go back, I mean, you're really talking about the Liberals. I mean, these don't forget this is a new creature coming from the 80s called the Liberal Democrats, oh. which is a new creature. It's the Liberals that were always for home rule and everything else. The Liberal Democrats are, yeah. I suppose the Social social Democrats. Yeah, Social social Democrats, Liberal Democrats, the same same time. Did you notice that two original members of the Social Social Democrats, the SDP, were promoted in Cameron's reshuffle? Or, 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 one of them was promoted, Chris Grayling apparently was an SDP member. And he must have left the Lib Dems and crossed to the Tories at some point. He's a Tory these days, isn't he? He's no, no, he's no longer. Well, if he is still a Lib Dem, he's incredibly right wing. Yeah, but they are. I mean, yeah. my, 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 some of the original Doctor Death, David Owen, all these people that mind. I mean, I always remember little Diddy David still you in, know, his in, pocket, the, yes. yeah, in his pocket. Yeah, in his pocket. I mean, um, I, I think it, it's interesting. I mean, the, the Tories have lodged to the right, which is nothing, as far as I'm concerned, but good for the independence debate. Mm. Um, what's going to be interesting is whether they stick to their, their agreement. And that, you know, it's not a sideshow to them in the Westminster Village. It's the main, the main deal. But for us, it's a useful distraction because their heavy hitters are going to be so busy trying to keep that knitted together. What, the coalition? Yep. They're not, they're Do not they going have to, to there's a quick question. Let's, we're kind of switching the topic here a bit, but what is the Lib Dems' position going to be? The closer we get to the next election, I mean, I mean, we're all expecting them to take a serious hammer. They've only got eight percent. They're sitting there at eight percent in the polls, week after week after week. They're well, going to get. They're blown out in Scotland. They'll they'll hang this about. Is, they'll hang about for a while. Uh, but at what point do they start to distance the, the, themselves? The, from the last the, the last year is what when they'll do it, and a lot of people will be hoodwinked. What what will happen in Scotland is much the same as happens with us. We're fortunate that we we know most of the people that represent our constituencies in, in Leith and Edinburgh and we vote for the individual we don't vote for the party mm. we look at who the guy is what he's done we look at his record I mean because we're political animals in that sense so you know that's what will happen in the islands in the north the liberals past Lib Dem strongholds they'll look at the man but the party's had it well also, that you said, I, mean, I wasn't thinking about um, I was thinking about the Westminster election well, that, that's what I'm talking about. Well, it'd be across the country because they're all yeah. really tagged with the same tar with the same brush now. You know, I mean. Well, I, I don't think they are. I, I think they they have good MPs. They have good people in position. You know, I mean, we. I, I, I think Charles County. That. That's about it. What they'll lose. What they'll lose is the. Those people that voted for them because they weren't voting Labour or Tory. Mm-hmm. Will now not vote for them because they lied to them. Yeah, they might yeah, go, they might go green because you found that on these links, where and lots of places. That's how we, we got the because their vote didn't come to us. Um, it melted away a lot of it to the Greens. Yeah, yeah, and that and that's great. By the way, Phil's, about Phil's it. talking about us. He means Labour. <laughs> Just in case you don't understand, yeah. he doesn't have a badge on today. No, 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 I don't know, but. Uh, but um, the big, the big <laughs> thing that what struck me about it is independence is inconsequential to the coalition. There was no changes at the north of the border. Um, they haven't even really thought about it. They're no. going to leave it to the rather, rather no. dreary <laughs> who they've got. And 
They're not really the day interested. After, the day after the referendum, if it's a yes, my goodness, a complete, it's a, it's a tower of cards. Westminster will collapse. Well, I mean, no. they have no Scotland, idea what's coming down there. Scotland gets their independence. The, the, the English who are driving for an independent forum for themselves will have every argument, every tool in the box. They'll yeah, and there's a, there's a good solution. Yeah, but it's got the law there. Well, but I, what I'm saying is... If there's a yes. Well, why should Northern Ireland get subsidised? Well, exactly. Mm -hmm. Why should Wales get subsidised? Well, the you know, thing, uh, as I say, that, the, whole, the whole happened. edifice of the United Kingdom collapses. Cause it makes why no should sense. the North East of England get subsidised? Yeah, all right. Okay. You know, yeah, well, but it will. I mean, it'll start to go, look, it should start to go on a federal basis. Phil's rant time. We should stand back and let Phil no, no, rant no, no, at the no. camera. Ta -da. Ta -da. Ta -da. <laughs> no, not in rant. I'm just listening to you. Not okay. today. Um, well, not that today. I, mean, sure, really. I think we got a wee bit vague there, but uh, I'm sure there's something. But I've assaulted your ears for long enough. Yes. Yeah, that's fine. Thank you very much. See you later.